Um, I'm joined here today with Patrick Peters. He's our specialist um, working with Antigua and Barbuda. He's got many years of experience. Um, he's not quite in the Caribbean at the moment. He's a little bit colder. He's sitting in uh, Canada. Uh, welcome, Patrick. Thanks, Shane. Yeah, it's a pleasure to join you. Thanks for having me. Perfect. So today we're going to be going through the ins and outs of Antigua and Barbuda. Uh, it is a Caribbean country and it has multiple different benefits. Um, it's become, well, it's sort of, sort of shot to the forefront in the last couple of weeks uh, with all the changes happening in the Caribbean at the moment. If we look at the past, if we look at the oldest, we're probably really looking at somewhere like uh, St. Kitts, which has gone through many, many different uh, changes. And uh, they've recently just doubled everything. So not as popular as it quite used to be. St. Lucia, unfortunately, has also just changed as of uh, a week ago, where we now see them um, veering away from the finance route. Most of those are sold out. So as I said, Antigua is shot to the front uh, from a cost-effective point of view. It's probably the most beneficial for uh, clients at the moment looking for alternative citizenship and residency. But I'm not going to take too much thunder away from Patrick. Um, what we're going to try and go through today is just who we are as a company, uh, Holborn Pass and Holborn Assets. We've been working um, in the CBI business for quite some time. General experience throughout the group is you're looking at probably about 20 odd plus years. So we kind of know what we're doing and um, it's been very beneficial for our clients and, and we've worked with many around the world. Um, citizenship by uh, investment. Um, it has been around since the early 1980s and has evolved and grown over the years. Um, as is Holborn, we've as I said, we've helped hundreds of clients everywhere from the US to uh, Portugal, Canada, you name those countries, we, we've been involved. So we're in a good place to be able to help clients um, sort of go through the minefield. So we would do all the uh, A to Z offerings from you, for you, everything from initial sign up to the day that you actually receive your passport or your residency or whatever your requirements are. We stick with you. We have a full team based throughout the globe that will assist you and, and help monitor you through that process. Now, although yesterday we're going to be talking about Antigua Barbuda, we do offer an array of offerings out there. Um, generally, with the Caribbean, we do all the offerings there. But if you're looking for, for a European point of view, we can also help you there. That includes places like Portugal, Greece, Turkey, Although Turkey is not part of the EU, but European. Um, you've got Spain. All of these countries, we have um, offerings within those countries to help you out. Uh, and what we've also done for those that are interested in more the Middle East, it's not quite on this uh, slide at the moment, but those are interested in the Middle East, we're also looking at places like Dubai. Um, what I would suggest in doing is contact your uh, advisor, let them know your parameters and we'll be able to assist to make sure that we meet um, your required structures. Now, going to the Caribbean, um, there's a number of different benefits there. It's not just a case of here's your passport and off you go. The benefits within the Caribbean offer multitudes of um, solutions for clients' um, sort of requirements. Generally speaking, if we're looking at these passports, they are fairly strong passports. Majority of these countries are going to be um, Commonwealth type of countries, which then obviously gives them the accessibility into places like the UK, um, the European uh, Schengen zone, and obviously other potential places like Singapore and Hong Kong. Additionally to that, um, it just stops anything, well, these passports, they basically create a free travel uh, opportunity. If anyone's actually gone to apply for a Schengen visa in the last couple of months, you all know that trying to get an appointment is taking a lengthy time, getting all the documents together, standing in the queues and waiting for your passport to uh, get back. Most of these uh, visas are only giving you short term 
Really, they do give a little bit longer, but that just takes out all the mess, the fuss. It is probably one of your top plan B options in the fact that there are beautiful places to live within the Caribbean. But from a study point of view, from an educational point of view, they've got some of the best universities in the world. You've got places like St. George's University in Granada, which is offering clients medical. If you look at it, the US, probably one out of every 10 US qualified doctors qualified on the island and in the university. And then obviously you've got the banking systems and your, your business views. There's a lot happening in the Caribbean at the moment. So more than just a passport, very, very good plan B. And from a political and, and economical point of view, very, very strong company uh, country. CARICOM is quite a benefit for, for clients. If we look at what CARICOM is, CARICOM is very similar to the EU uh, type of structure. You've got 18 uh, countries that are involved in the CARICOM with different levels of participation, but it basically allows you freedom of movement between those countries as far as trade, as far as work, and as far as uh, education goes. And then you've got, depending on which country you are, but somewhere like Antigua, you've got freedom of movement between five different Caribbean countries where you have unlimited stay allowances. So it gives you a nice freedom of movement if Antigua is not necessarily the place you want to live, there are alternative options for you. Although Antigua is pretty special if you if you see it. From a retirement destination, Caribbean is amazing. If you look at uh, from a tax point of view, once you become a, a tax um, resident there, you have a very low uh, tax jurisdiction. So most of these places, inheritance tax, capital gains tax, wealth tax, these are all void. Um, and from a retirement destination, obviously, uh, living out of there, beautiful scenery and benefits from a tax point of view. Healthcare, obviously, having all these universities and these places that uh, are offering medical students, their healthcare is very, very good. Although, in the event that you do need something unattainable within the countries, location-wise, very, very close to the U.S. So you have that that database to be able to assist you with there. So Antigua itself forms part of the Caribbean, all right? From a size point of view, you're looking at about 440 square kilometers. They use the Caribbean dollar, although US dollar is widely uh, utilized as well. And it's English speaking. So it's not a case of you have to learn another language. You don't have to try and bring in translators. It's fairly easy to survive. And with a population of 93,000, um, yeah, you, you, it, it, it's got that uh, personal feel to it. But now, I'm sure you're tired of me talking. I think let's get uh, Patrick in here. Let's let him tell you all the wonderful things. He's been there a lot. He's uh, worked with uh, Antugo for many, many years. So over to you, Patrick. Thanks, Shane. Yeah, great introduction. Um, I don't think I have much to add. So <laughs> uh, yeah, one uh, one other thing that I find an interesting nugget, if you want to rewind back to the last slide to that map of the Caribbean, um, one thing I like to point out is if you look at Antigua and Barbuda's geographical location, you'll see that it's the the far more like northeast. Why that's important historically and geographically, it's the first stop when the ships would come uh, from Europe, Europe and Africa. And so that's why Antigua developed uh, economically sooner than uh, than many of its neighbors, uh, because it was a very strategically located island that the French, Spanish, and British fought over. Um, and so it developed sooner economically. It was the first uh, area to abolish slavery, so they had to replace some of those uh, industries with more modern uh, industries. And so it, it's also always been a travel hub historically and still is today. That rings true today. They have direct, the most direct flights of the area. Um, you know, if you want to spend some time in Dominica or, or St. Kitts or some of the other countries, oftentimes you have to fly to Antigua, spend the night and then lay over, fly over elsewhere. Um, so I, I, I thought that was a little uh, kind of sidebar, an interesting little nugget about that explains when you come, you know, you mentioned Antigua is a nice place to spend time. It's true. Um, it's developed. Uh, there's real um, 
you know, there's real like nightlife and, and social activity. The education is good. Healthcare is good. Um, and uh, it's a real place that we could live, uh, which sometimes all around the world, not just Caribbean, but all around the world, some of these smaller islands, they're great for vacation, but you wouldn't want to maybe raise a family there. You wouldn't be able to build a business there. But Antigua is different. Antigua has meat on the bones, let's say, that that do come with all the beautiful beaches. So let's focus on the, the CBI. Um, yeah, it's been around for 10 years now. Um, it's been around for quite a while. And what we like about it is its stability. Shane, you mentioned that it's kind of shot up to the ranks. Um, and by just by doing nothing, um, people often ask me lately, like, why is Antigua so popular right now? Why are clients coming into my office asking for it? Uh, well, it's by doing nothing. A lot of the other programs have made changes that just by default has rendered Antigua very attractive. Um, and for the last 10 years, we've been kind of repeating the same message to the government and, and the CIU in Antigua is just you know, play the long game, create stability. Uh, don't change your price too often. Don't change your program too often. That allows, you know, advisors and, and companies like Holborn and, and the whole industry, you know, when there's stability, we can build businesses around that. Um, and so that's kind of what's happening in Antigua now. A lot of their pricing that they've established a long time ago, due diligence process, uh, the the whole processing of the application, the way they've structured their program, a lot of the others are kind of following suit now, and that's just rendered Antigua as um, as the go-to program. Um, and so that's that's been one of the important things for for the Antigua program. Just stability comes with credibility, um, and so overall, you're looking at a three to six months processing time. Um, and, uh, and the, it's the best definition for dependence in the industry as well. This is really important. So kids from 30 and below, so kids up to the age of 30 and dependent parents, uh, from 55 and above can apply, but also something that's not on the slide, siblings of any age of any financial dependence or financial status okay, can be included in an application. Um, there's only one requirement for siblings. They have to be unmarried. So um, that means three things, either single, like never married, either widowed or divorced. So, you know, if you're an applicant, you could have a 45-year-old billionaire sibling uh, who's never been married or is widowed, and they could be part of the application. Um, and so that's a, a very neat uh, feature because we often see we often see that like a 35, 38, 40 year old principal applicant, um, they're married, they have kids, so they have let's say a family of three, four, five. Uh, then they bring in their parents who are seniors, and they have siblings. So in most programs, they would have to do two or more applications to get this family a second citizenship. But in Antigua, we can often band them all together, uh, which which brings more value for the money, more va more bang for the buck, as as we say. Um, so that's a very interesting uh, feature of the program, which ties into the next advantage is it's the least expensive program for families of any size. So when you start bringing larger families, uh, you get a bigger, uh, there's more flexibility for the definition of dependence, uh, and you get more of your family members into one application. Um, there's no requirements to travel to Antigua during the application period. Um, there is a one week uh, travel requirement. You need to, every member of the family needs to spend one week in Antigua at any point in the first five years. So the government of Antigua is very flexible on this. It's just when the family will apply for a renewal of their passport after five years, the first renewal, they will ask for proof that the family has been to Antigua. For example, stamps in the passport, boarding passes, uh, hotel bookings, things like that. Um, so it's quite easy. 
You come for a vacation in paradise for one week with your family at any point in a five-year period. I think that's pretty much it. Shane, do you, is there anything else on that part that you, you think I should touch on? Yeah, I, th I think you basically covered it. I think the, the other thing, and it, it's a slide at the end, I think the other thing that we need to mention is um, part of the process that will be going forward now, an interview um, sort of requirement that you will need to do an interview. Um, but that's something that we would manage on your behalf. We would so we would set that up for you. It is an online interview. Um, but yeah, I think you've basically covered everything else. I think the next the next slide is obviously you've been doing this for so long. You've been involved in Antigua for so long. Um, you've 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 put your feet in the sand. Um, what are the benefits? Yeah, my feet in the sand, not my head in the sand. I, I keep that <laughs> up. <laughs> um, yeah, you're right. Uh, I've been doing this since the beginning of the program, and. Um, it's my passion. I love this program. I love this country. I spent a lot of time there. Um, and uh, uh, the, the benefits, th listen, the biggest driver right now that we're seeing uh, around the world are, you, you touched on it earlier, what I like to say, it's the, it's the insurance that, it, you, that the insurance company can't sell you. Um, it's a plan B. It's a, a, a document in case of a rainy day. And so more and more clients are coming into um, into the application process because of that, the, the plan B, the backup plan. But, you know, it's also a tax free, like there's zero personal income tax, no income tax, no wealth tax, no tax on inheritance, no capital gains tax. At the personal level, you pay zero income tax across the board. There's no hidden you know, catch, catch you tax, there's nothing. Um, so right now, the tax structure and for the last 10 years, and, and historically, it's been like that. Uh, so that's a big driver for in terms of wealth planning, offshore tax protection, um, tax strategization. So that's another big driver. Um, and the the travel mobility as well, the freedom of travel really helps. Uh, that's uh, a lot of people look at that aspect. Why Antigua specifically? I think it's because of that. It's a bigger, more established place, country that you can easily travel to and that you can actually live uh, if you didn't, do need to, to go somewhere. Antigua, you can build a business there. There's a big enough economy. Um, you know, you can send your kids there, the medical care, the hospital. The hospital in St. John's is the most advanced um, technologically in in the region um so it's it's a great uh, it's a great country um you know like the slide says it's a, a strong legal structure socially stable um english speaking democracy all of that stuff um yeah it's just a great destination sounds like it i mean i suppose everyone's now asking well how uh, what is the process it, you know how do how do we start where do we begin um very simple uh these programs in general have really streamlined the process and antigua is no no different uh i love what they've done by the way i keep repeating stability uh because it's so key antigua has the longest standing uh, ceo of their ciu so the longest manager of the program she's been ceo since 2016 so almost eight years but she's been with the program she was the head of compliance um, from the very beginning in 2013, and her background is banking compliance. Canada's most international bank called Scotia Bank. Uh, she used to work for Scotia Bank in the Caribbean uh, at the head office, and so um, she's she's had a great career, and she's been there since the beginning of the program. Which which means in Antigua we don't see sometimes some of the processing hiccups that we can see elsewhere. Like uh, what we saw in St. Kitts, like last minute changes that left a lot of clients hanging. You know, some days we were ready to submit an application. The client has spent weeks preparing a file and all of a sudden they close the program and double the price without announcement. St. Antigua, again, the stability, it's smooth. We, they set expectations and, and meet it. So, um, so same thing with the processing time. Overall, you're looking at a, uh, a three to six months process. Um, 
So from the day you start working with your clients and collecting the documents, um, and it, you know, it might typically takes anywhere from three to six weeks to prepare an application. Um, you know, that means collecting documents, filling out forms, etc. Uh, and then once we have the full application, we can submit that to the CIU. They're pretty good at some at uh, approving applications in three months right now. Sometimes a bit longer, four four five months. Um, but overall, it's a pretty quick process. And once they're approved, we th they make the investment to uh, the government's bank accounts, um, and uh, and then the citizenship certificates and passports get delivered uh, within a matter of weeks. And so, yeah, overall, you're looking at a it's roughly six months process. Perfect. Yeah, it it we we've seen a lot of changes in some of the other ones, which are taking a little bit longer than that. But uh, yeah, we've we've seen the the benefits of Integra. Now, as far as the investment routes, what what are, what are the options for the clients? Well, there's uh, you can see here four options. I like to group them into three options. Uh, A and B essentially are non-refundable contributions or donations, uh, as you can see. Um, and the, the donation amount varies uh, it, on the family size. So a family of four or less pays $100,000 as a non-refundable contribution. Family size of five pay one hundred twenty-five, dollars And family size of six or more pay one hundred fifty. dollars um, And so th that's the donation route. Anywhere from hundred dollars to $150,000, depending on the family size. Bullet point C on the slide talks about real estate investment. Um, the minimum required investment is $200,000. And uh, the last point, which is very rare, uh, but uh, we do see some applicants going through, um, it's a business investment of $1.5 million. And we, we're able to help with all. Um, so, yeah, we can, we can, again, guide you through the process and work with you. But uh, from a cost point of view, well, you know, you mentioned the real estate and a lot of clients are looking at real estate and, and it so happens that you have a property option for us. Um, can you run it through us? Yeah. So on top of being the, the like you said, the local Antigua processing experts, like the local agent, uh, we're also, we have an exclusive tie up with the largest company in Antigua. Um, these guys build hotels and property, and that's what they've been doing for 40 years. They're called Elite Island Resorts. Um, you know, they're they're a huge group. They own half of the, the hotel rooms on the island and much more. So I mentioned that because it's a very experienced developer um, who does a lot of volume in Antigua. They know what they're doing. And the current project that we're building is called Veranda Estates. Veranda Estates is a gated community of single family homes, or in Antigua, they call them villas. Um, and so what we do, typically a client or two friends or partners or whatever, uh, will buy one of these properties. And typically they want us to manage it. So we find the tenants and take care of the property and pay them the, the rent income at the end of the year. Um, our villas start at $400,000 uh, for each villa. And uh, it's very safe, uh, safe investment. It's freehold title, by the way. So it's really one where the applicant will have their name on the title deed. And it's their home. It's like a thousand uh, to 1200 square meter piece of property and 100 to 150 square meter uh, home. So value for the money, like price per square meter, it can't be beat across the Caribbean. So it's a very safe investment. After five years, the client can resell this. Uh, the Antigua real estate market is big enough to, to have a secondary market for that. Antiguans live in this project and live in these homes. Um, our sales is not just for CIP, it's really 50-50 CIP and, uh, and uh, local uh, uh, homeowners. Uh, so that's the project that we have there. Um, in, in Antigua. Yep. Are there any other projects that you'd possibly look at? Uh, I know a lot of these guys are doing hotels and shares and hotels and things like that. 
Is that something you can also offer clients? We, we, right now, this is our only project, but we support the, the processing side of things. Yes, we can help with that, with anything. Sure. Of course. Perfect. Um, I suppose then it comes on the cost. Now, this is kind of a, a generalized table of, of, of what we would look at generally for a family of four. There are a couple of other costs that we would need to take into account, bearing in mind that the age of the children um, because obviously a dependent, depending on their ages, will will meet different criteria and there's different due diligence. But this is just a generalized average family of four uh, with two young kids, so husband, wife, two young kids. And this gives you an understanding about the real estate versus the donation route. Right? So this is purely an, an example uh, table. But um, what are the benefits versus going the donation route versus the real estate route, let's for instance, which one would you choose and why? Um, so a lot of our clients who are in countries with currency restrictions um, are limited by the, or it's very difficult to get money out of the country. Um, so they like what looks at the lowest cash flow possible, which is the donation route, obviously. But clients who are outside of those jurisdictions, clients who are looking to drive down the overall price of over a long-term period of their program do like the real estate option. Um, so we're really seeing a good mix of clients um, uh, overall, but it depends on the jurisdiction, I, I would say. Talking about that, are there any specific jurisdictions that um, we can't uh, assist with? There's a certain countries where clients are coming from that we can't work with. Uh, the two that Antigua. we can't work with are Russia and Belarus. Okay. Um, there's so, no. So our Syrian you know, clients, Iranian clients, we we can we can follow through with them. There's uh, a few other countries with uh, with fine print. Um, okay. Nationals from Afghanistan, Iran, Somalia, Sudan. Uh, North Korea and Yemen. We can serve them if they've been outside of of this restricted country for at least ten years, and have no economic ties to them. So oftentimes we'll see somebody from one of these nations, but they've been living in Dubai, or in Europe, or UK, or US, or somewhere uh, for for over ten years. Then we can serve them. Perfect. So, all right. So, guys, if, if you've got any questions that you want to put forward to, to myself or, or Patrick, um, please utilize the Q&A box. I see we've got a couple already. Um, the next slide was was generally going to be just making sure that, uh, that, that, that we know this and we can try and address any questions. Uh, to start off, Patrick, uh, we do have a question here. Does the government inform applicants domicile countries that they have been taken or that they've taken citizenship? So basically, do they release uh, the names of, of clients taking citizens to other countries? Not at all. It's a confidential program uh, process, and the government very much understands that. Um, and I can attest things I've seen with my own eyes that, uh, that show me and give me comfort that they prioritize that confidentiality. Perfect. With the um, with the with the fact that you can uh, have siblings, understandable if they're not married. If they have kids, will that impact them? How does that impact them? So it doesn't impact them. You know, to answer the question directly, if they have kids, it doesn't matter. They can be part of the application. To add me to the bone, though, is the kid because of the way the law is written. The kids of siblings can't be part of the application. They can't be dependent because a dependent is a, a dependent on the principal applicant. And siblings can be dependent on their, their, their principal applicant's sibling. But like nieces and nephews of a principal applicant can't be included. Um, so there, there is that little, you know, kind of technical detail that I, I find important if, if answering this question. Okay, so so would just a follow-on question: Would that child, if the parent were to get a passport through this process as a sibling, would the child be able to apply for a passport later on? 
Yes, but they would have to actually go live in Antigua for seven years. They couldn't be. They couldn't qualify through the CIP. Perfect. All right. All right. Okay. And um, just to add as yeah. well. Oh, sorry, Shen. No, no, no. Go for it. Well, I realized that when talking about siblings and dependents, I mentioned the principal applicant. It's not just the principal applicant. It's also the spouse. So if the spouse has dependent parents, or if the spouse has siblings that are unmarried, they can also be included. Um, so I just wanted to make that clear. Both principal applicant and their accompanying spouse can bring parents and siblings. Perfect. Uh, next question. Uh, are the passport fees quoted per person or for the entire family? How are the uh, due diligence costs and things like that worked out? That's so that's three. on an individual basis. Yep. Yeah, there's three government fees. Uh, number one is a government processing fee. Actually, Shane, maybe we can back up to the cost example slide. For, I'm more visual anyway. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> so there's the, the you can see this processing fee. The first one. This is a fixed fee for a family of four. So it's not per person, it's um, it's for a family of four. And then four and above, you start tacking on additional fees, $15,000 per additional person. The due diligence fee is per person, and that depends on the age. Um, so principal applicant and spouse are $7,500 each. And that's why the due diligence fee here is $15,000. Um Children and uh, dependent parents and siblings, um, that varies from zero to $4,000 per person, depending on their age. The passport fee that you see there, $1,200, that's $300 per person. Uh, the licensed agent fee is per family, that is fixed. And the donation varies based on uh, on family size. Real estate does not vary. So I, I think that answers the, the question, but please correct me if I'm wrong. No, I think you've got it all right there. As I say, there are a few little extras that, that do come on this. We do have to, to look into legal fees and all sorts of things, but we'll be able to give you a personalized uh, costing for, for you and your family, uh, and we can go through it in more detail then. Um, something we, 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 we see a lot, and we, we, we get this question often, is we have now a passport that allows us to travel to all these places can we live there can we can we spend the rest of our lives there or the extended time periods that you can stay there how long do we get to spend within these countries uh, once we have this passport as, as long as you want um, you are a citizen like no other it's not a second class of, of citizenship uh, so I'm meaning live... with, within like places like Europe and places like the UK oh. and Schengen and all this. Uh, what are your time periods? Can you live there? Can you work there? Uh, having second, uh, the citizenship of Antigua or any other country does not give you the right to live and work in Europe. Um, it allows you to enter as a tourist. Um, but I'm no immigration expert for you know each of these jurisdictions. I'm really the Antigua expert. So... Uh, I would, uh, you know, I would offer you to to discuss to your whole born specialist when it comes to other jurisdictions, immigration laws. <laughs> so, so, so generally speaking, with the Schengen, we can do a ninety day and a hundred and eighty day period, and with places like the UK, because it is a Commonwealth country, you can generally spend six months at a time within the country on on the travel visa. Um, most places, rule of thumb, you're probably looking at. Uh, 90 days and 180 day period. All right. Uh, next question. Obviously, looking at the property and how amazing it is. Um, how's the extreme weather situation? Hurricanes, floods, things like that. We obviously see a lot of this online and, and on news reports. What's it like in Antigua? Antigua is in the hurricane, uh, I forget what they call it, the belt or whatever, but hurricane zone. But um, What's different about Antigua is be, because it's a bit more economically developed, the the construction can handle it. Um, and so, you know, a few years ago, the island of Barbuda uh, or, or Dominica or some other, you know, less developed nations, poorer nations 
they get hammered by hurricanes and it hurts. Um, but Antigua itself is not too bad. Um, and so, uh, so I'm generally speaking, we're not too worried about it. Does it happen? Yeah. Once every 10, 15, 20 years, but our property, like specific to our property, the construction is very strong. Like I said, this group has been doing this for 40 years. Um, and the properties are insured, uh, against, uh, hurricanes. So if ever there were, you know, the small chance that something were to happen to the properties, there would be, uh, an insurance coverage for it. Okay. And then talking about the properties and things, how do we, how do they, how do we select a property? So let's say, can we have a residence property? Uh, can we buy any property within, within Antigua or does it have to be a specific property and why? So the government has prioritized certain zones of the country where they want to see economic development and they have pre-approved projects within those zones uh, that they've deemed as uh, credible or legitimate uh, projects. So in order to choose where to invest in property, you do have to pick from one of those pre-approved projects um, on, uh, you know, on the, that the CIU has approved. Okay. And the and the property that you've you've put forward, can you can you live there? Can you retire there? Is it a property that you have to rent out, or can it be a residential property? Uh, the rental program is purely optional. Um, a lot of our clients uh, don't live. Uh, the great majority of our clients don't live in Antigua, um, but the many who do, uh, and they do buy into their project, absolutely. Um, it's a real r- residential project with locals. Uh, living in it. Um, some of them are CIP clients. Some of them are retirees from Canada, US, UK, uh, who've bought a home there and have made it their home. Others are like uh, tenants. For example, one of our CIP clients will invest in this project, uh, but doesn't want to live in Antigua. So he, he asks us to manage it, puts it in our rental program. So we have a lineup of tenants like, uh, because remember the developer also owns 50% of the hotel rooms, like the hotel resorts. So for example, let's say he'll bring a French chef or an Italian chef uh, over to Antigua on a two-year contract. Uh, well, he, the, the chef will rent out one of the homes uh, or the general manager of the Canadian bank who's been brought on a contract will rent one of these homes. Um, so, so absolutely, the rental program is optional. We have good tenants lined up for it. Um, and, uh, but if the applicant, the investor chooses to live in it, it's a great place to live close to beaches, close to amenities, restaurants, hotels, pools, gyms. Um, so all of the above. Thanks. Well, Patrick, I think, I think we, oh, one more, one more. Um, <laughs> do you need to take out private medical insurance or is there an established welfare system for the citizens? Yes, uh, th- there's not. Uh, it's not free healthcare. The way I, I hear this question is: Is medical free there? No, you would have to pay for the medical care. Uh, do you have to take out insurance? No. Uh, is there a welfare system? Yes. Would our clients coming to Antigua need to pay for their own medical care? Yes. Also, yes. There. Okay. Perfect. All right. Well, I, I know you've got a dash. I think you've got a flight to catch, but um, I think. The nice thing about this is we have recorded this for anyone wanting to look back and and, and see any of the uh, the, the answers that, that have come about and will be put onto YouTube, onto our uh, websites, um, and, and and it will be available to, to any clients that are looking for it. I think the best step to go forward is to, to speak to your, your advisor. That advisor will be able to go a little bit more into detail with your specific case, and, and then we can assist from there. Uh, Patrick, anything you want to add before we we sign off? No, um, you know Antigua looks like it's the bell of the ball right now. Uh, it's a strong, stable program, and we're here to to help you, Shane. We're here to help Holborn's uh, advisors, their clients. Uh, we want, you know, we've been doing this for a long time, and we just want to keep the ball rolling. We just want to keep everybody building their business, all the clients being happy, referring more clients. So we're here to support you um, and, and we're happy for the, the opportunity. So thank you. Thank you very much, Patrick. All right, guys, enjoy the rest of your days, your evenings and your mornings. Okay.